Hello everyone, here we have a brilliant question. A particle is projected from the origin with the speed u and it's making an angle theta with the horizontal. We have to find the moment of time when the particle will be moving perpendicular to its initial direction of motion. Got the question? If you wish, you may pause the video and give it a try and then match your answers. I'll be solving this question with five different approaches. Let's begin. This statement says that at some moment, the particle will be moving perpendicular to its initial direction of motion. This red indicates its initial direction of motion. Got it? And particle is moving perpendicular to that. Perpendicular to that means it will be making an angle of 90 degree. This angle should be 90 degree. So somewhere here, let's say I draw the particle's velocity vector as v. Do you agree? This was u vector. This is v vector. The v vector is actually perpendicular to the initial direction of motion. That is the meaning of this statement. Okay. Since u vector is perpendicular to v vector, it means the dot product must be 0. I hope you remember it from the vectors and from here you can initiate your solution. Done. Putting up the data, let's say u vector is u vector only. At the place of v vector, can we write u vector plus g vector into t? v vector is equal to u vector plus g vector into t. Got it. Do the dot product u vector dot u vector plus u vector dot g vector and keep the t outside. Okay. Dot product has been done between two vectors. t is a scalar quantity. I kept it outside and in RHS it is equal to 0. u vector dot u vector will be written as u u cos 0 degree u vector dot g vector will be written as u g cos of 90 degree plus theta and outside there is t i'll explain why that is happening the u vector was in this direction and it was making angle theta with the horizontal the g vector was in this direction and this angle is 90 so how much is the angle between u vector and g vector 90 degree plus theta i hope you understand this 90 degree plus theta done now it's simple mathematics cos 0 degree will become 1 so here we obtain u square plus cos 90 degree plus theta becomes minus sine theta so i'm putting here a negative sign u g sine theta t is equal to 0. Is it fine? Now approaching towards the last step. If you simplify this u g sin theta t is equal to u square. We can cancel out that one u from here and our target was t. t will be equal to u by g sin theta. An interesting answer. At this moment of time, the particle's velocity vector will be perpendicular to the initial direction of motion. Got it? If you wish, you may note it down. Then I'll be proving why theta has been taken greater than equal to 45 degree. That proof is also simple once you note it down. I hope you have noted down the things. Let's prove this condition. Obviously, this t should be less than equal to time of flight. Do you agree? Because this point might happen here, 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 somewhere here or maximum up to here. This condition should happen. So the small t should be less than equal to the capital T, the time of flight. I hope you agree with that small t is what u by g sin theta 
what is capital T 2 u sin theta divided by g. So, here u getting cancelled out, g is also getting cancelled out. So, we will get the condition 1 by 2 is less than equal to sin square theta taking root both the sides. So, 1 by root 2 is less than equal to sin theta. Do you agree with these conditions? Let us proceed further here. 1 by root 2 can be written as sin 45 degree should be less than equal to sin theta. Okay. Now, you can easily compare the things. 45 degree should be less than equal to theta or theta should be greater than equal to 45 degree. That's how we have mentioned this condition. So, if at any moment the velocity of the particle is perpendicular to its initial direction of motion for that theta must be greater than equal to 45 degree. Got it? Simple and nice question. You may note it down, then we will proceed further. Here comes the second method. Pay attention again. Since at this moment of time, the V vector is perpendicular to U vector, I am using the triangle law of vector addition. We know that V vector is equal to U vector plus G vector times T. So, let us say this is the U vector. Okay. G vector into T will be in this direction. I hope you agree. And V vector should be this resultant. And we already know that u vector and v vector are perpendicular to each other that we have established. Okay. This angle with the horizontal was theta. Do you agree? This angle will be 90 degree minus theta and this angle will be theta. These are the angles. Done. Now, we need to determine the time. For that, what you can do? If you check this vector having the length gt and you take the component of gt in this direction along the blue line, what you should be writing? Think about it. It will be gt sin theta and that must be equal to u. So, t comes out to be u by g sin theta. Simple and direct answer using the triangle law of vector addition. If you are not getting it, what you do? You take the sin theta in this triangle. In this bigger triangle, take sin theta. Sin theta will be equal to u by g t. I hope you understand this. Okay. So, what will be t? t will be equal to u by g sin theta. Again, the same answer. So, this approach, the triangle law of vector addition is very powerful tool. If you think about the projectile motion using the vector approach, many questions becomes super easy. Got it? You may note down this second method of solution. Then we'll move to the third method. Here comes the third method. Pay attention here. The particle is moving on the parabolic path. The u was in this direction. Okay. And the g was in this direction. With horizontal, the initial velocity vector was making an angle theta. I am doing the components of the g. So, this component in the opposite direction of the u vector will be what? Can you tell this component of g and another component perpendicular to this u? See, if this angle is theta, angle here will be 90 minus theta. I am talking about this angle 90 degree minus theta. This angle must be 
theta. So the component of G in this direction will be G cos theta and the component of G in this direction will be G sin theta. Okay. This G sin theta will be responsible for slowing down the particle because u is in this direction and g sin theta is in this direction. So along this direction, the speed of particle will keep on decreasing. For simplicity, let's say you assume this to be the x-axis and we assume this to be the y-axis this time. Okay. After some time, velocity of the particle along the x-axis will become zero. Do you agree with that? because it's slowing down because of this acceleration and in negative y direction the speed of particle will keep on increasing due to the presence of this g cos theta got it so ultimately we have to make the velocity zero along the x-axis then particles velocity will be remaining only along the negative y-axis clear so the particle will be moving perpendicular to its initial direction of motion. I am doing that 0 is equal to u minus g sin theta into t. This was the acceleration responsible for making this velocity 0. Here comes the t is equal to u by g sin theta. Again the same answer. I hope you enjoyed this method also. Just Changing the perspective of the question, we get the answer in single line. You can try this in many questions of the projectile. Note it down, then we will proceed for the fourth method. Here comes the fourth solution and it's a brilliant one. Suppose we consider the slope of the red line is equal to m1 and the slope of the blue line as m2 okay these two lines are perpendicular so what should be the product of their slopes little bit mathematics i hope you remember m1 m2 will be minus 1 whenever two straight lines are perpendicular to each other then the product of their slopes is equal to minus 1 Suppose this is the time t, okay, at time t, this coordinate of point p, let us say we consider this point p, then coordinates are x, comma y, okay, fine, I am writing up the slopes. Slope of the red line will be equal to 10 theta because the angle theta is visible to us, so I am writing first part here, 10 theta. Slope of the second line I wish to write as dy by dx okay we know the coordinate x and y so slope I am writing dy by dx and it should be equal to minus 1 the 10 theta I am shifting to the RHS and writing the remaining expression d by dx what is y you remember the equation of trajectory this y we wish to write y will be equal to x 10 theta minus g x square divided by 2 u square cos square theta okay and here we are left with minus 1 by 10 theta done proceeding further here x is the variable 10 theta is constant g is constant 2 u square cos square theta is also constant so i am doing the differentiation with respect to x differentiation of x with respect to x what you will get 1 then what is remaining here 10 theta minus g by 2 u square cos square theta is constant differentiation of x square will be 2x i hope you agree this 2 is getting cancelled out is it fine and here in the rhs we are left with cos theta divided by sin theta okay now can we write the x coordinate at time t think about it here we have the x coordinate what will be the x coordinate at time t i am putting the value you can tell your opinion in the comment box minus g by u cos theta into u cos theta and at the place of x 
I should be submitting u cos theta into t. The x coordinate will be horizontal speed into time. I hope you know this. u cos theta into time t will give us the x coordinate. Okay, if you require, I'm writing also that here x will be equal to u cos theta into t. Fine. Okay, now here we are left with minus of cos theta by sine theta. Now it's all mathematics left. So let's proceed further for that mathematics. 10 theta can be written as sine theta by cos theta. I am rewriting this 10 theta. Here u cos theta is getting cancelled out. So what you are left with minus gt by u cos theta. Is it fine? Here we are left with minus cos theta by sin theta. Doing little bit rearrangement. This term I am shifting to LHS and this one I am shifting to RHS. So it will look like sin theta by cos theta plus cos theta by sin theta is equal to gt by u cos theta. I hope you agree with this. Now simplifying it further, taking up the LCM. So we are left here with sine square theta plus cos square theta divided by cos theta sine theta. Here is gt by u cos theta. You can see this cos theta is getting cancelled out. Sine square theta plus cos square theta will become 1. So finally you are left with what? T is equal to u by g sin theta the same answer okay i hope you liked this method this method requires the knowledge of the geometry when the two straight lines are perpendicular the product of their slopes will be equal to minus one okay you note it down based on this trick i'll be solving the same question in next screen. Here comes the last and the fifth method of this question. We have already established that red line and the blue line are perpendicular to each other. So the product of their slopes will be equal to minus one. At time t, particle's velocity vector is v as shown here. This we show as the velocity is x component and this we show as the velocity is y component. Is it okay? Fine. Now I am writing the vy here. vy is equal to uy plus ay into t. For that we are taking this to be the x-axis and here we are considering the y-axis. This is the origin. uy we know that component of u along this direction will be equal to u sine theta. Ay will be taken as minus g because upward direction has been chosen positive then below the origin will be taking up the negative sign. This is t. This is vy. Okay. Vx is equal to ux plus ax into t. Another expression. Ux is the u cos theta and ax is 0. There is no acceleration in the x direction. So Vx is equal to u cos theta. These are two important things which will require for our calculation. I am coming back to this expression. M1 will be written as 10 theta and M2 we write as dy by dx. This should be equal to minus 1. I am dividing by dt in numerator as well as denominator and shifting the 10 theta to the RHS. Pay attention what is being done. dy by dt upon dx by dt is equal to minus 1 by 10 theta. Do you agree with this simple computation? What is dy by dt? dy by dt will become vy and what is dx by dt? it will become vx. Do you agree with this? So our expression will be vy by vx is equal to minus cos theta by sin theta. Okay. Taking the further calculations here, 
vy has already been obtained u sin theta minus gt vx is equal to u cos theta okay is equal to minus cos theta by sin theta let's carry further the calculation i am multiplying that u cos theta on that side shifting the data pay attention multiplying sin theta here so it will be u sin square theta minus gt sin theta and this will become minus u cos square theta i hope you agree with this calculation now shifting this u cos square theta here and taking u common we are left here with sin square theta plus cos square theta shifting the gt sin theta there in the rhs so it will look like this sin square theta plus cos square theta everyone knows is equal to 1 so here we get the expression of t is equal to u by g sin theta again the same result i hope you enjoyed this method also so when we solve the same question with five different approaches we learn a lot stay awesome see you again and if you want any other question or any other trick let me know in the comment box.